The greatest of the greats have run here and, and they've won here. Did you guys see that? The coolest thing about the kind of LA vibe and the Hollywood vibe is just the, you know, the, the diversity of people that you find here. There's a lot of really cool people. A lot of them definitely live a, a laid back lifestyle, which is kind of cool. I was, you know, injected into this world I knew nothing about. I had, you know, an appreciation for, but not really so much of an understanding. The winners and new champions of Dancing with the Stars are Lori and Val. I never thought I'd, I'd hear myself say this, but I do, I do kind of miss dancing. I do miss, I certainly miss a lot about the whole process. You know, I, I miss the people, I miss the, uh, you know, the rush of show night for sure. Do I miss 12 hours of rehearsal a day and my feet feeling like I'm 90 years old when I wake up every morning? No, there are definitely parts like that that I don't miss. Coming back to Long Beach after spending, you know, so much time in Los Angeles area, you know, last year and, and started this year and uh, it, it's cool. It's, it's kind of like my, my second American home. I definitely feel, you know, more at home here than I ever have in the past. It was great getting to see Sharn again, obviously, you know, it was uh, the first time we'd, we'd seen each other in person since the show ended. You look so good! Likewise. What's new and exciting? Life. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> what is it this week? Foxtrot. Okay, yeah. Similar to you, he's better with, like, the... Yeah, he, he the looks it. Frames. Yeah. We had Charleston in week three. Yeah. Remember when you tried the Charleston step, you were like, nope. Next. <laughs> She had a very rare day off, which is weird. We never had one of those in, in our season, so I'm not sure exactly how this happened. So, Miss Burgess, here is your bottle of milk <laughs> slash invitation to come to Indy 500. I can't wait to go. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna sign this for you too, just so that you can't sell it on eBay. Or, I know I'm gonna see that suit on eBay one day. Just, I know it. Or it's just, no, you're not. Absolutely, <laughs> you're not. Three years old now, and the, the greatest of the greats have run here, and, and they've won here, you know. And so it, it makes this one one that everybody wants to win. I had watched this race on TV as a kid. I used to watch Alan Sir Jr. wax people here and watch Paul Tracy win this race. And Paul Tracy has finally done it. Coming here was one of those bucket list items as a young kid, being like, I want to race on the streets of Long Beach. My first trip to Long Beach as a driver was back in 2006, and I was running the Formula Atlantic Championship. It was actually our first race of the season, and I actually finished on the podium my first time here. Off of turn number 11, he'll look for the twin checkers flag. James Hinchcliffe will win on the streets of Long Beach, California. My first win in Indy Lights actually came here. My first top five in an Indy car was here. My first podium in IndyCar was here. There's been a lot of firsts and a lot of happy memories here at Long Beach. Few events offer the atmosphere. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, America's longest running street race. The pre-race engineering meetings are something that we have to go through because there's always a few little differences from the previous event or the next event, but you know, for the most part, the information's pretty similar. I think a lot's gonna be predicated by what happens on the start if there's a Turn one yellow behind us that uh, lasts for three or four laps. That's certainly going to push us towards the two-stop race. Mikhail and I are told certain pieces of information. We discuss the strategy between the two different cars. A lot of it's similar, but it's always nice to hear right before you get in the car. But as the race goes on, the gap between the three stoppers and the two stoppers will get closer together. The first one will be the biggest time delta. 
mayor of his town. Here's Kane. This race is awesome, you know. There's always so many fans. We love coming here. Our fingers are crossed because we know what can happen in turn one. <laughs> yeah. Start your engines! Pace car now ducking onto pit lane. Two by two. They're all in line. Green, green, green. Elio Castroneva, a track record. Bring him to the green flag. It's in the air. We're underway. Looking inside there. Inside. Clear right there. Clear. And the big loser on that restart, Elio Castroneva. Five got around him. That includes the leader right now, who is Scott Dixon. Just behind Dixon, you have James Hinchcliffe. The start for us went really well. Scott got a great launch. I was right on his gearbox. Elio started off okay, but then had a problem. Maybe an overboost, misshift, something like that. And it kind of held up both him and Ryan, which allowed Scott and I to sneak ahead. So from fourth to second by turn one, that was a great way to start the race. How is the time? It's all right. We're just starting to lose grip in one. And really lose the front everywhere else. Ryan Hunter Ray, another former winner, right on the heels of car number five. Hunter Ray going to take a look down to the inside of James Hinchcliffe. He makes the pass and sets off in pursuit of Scott Dixon. Just like that. I mean, it looked like Hinch was all over Scott Dixon. Now he loses his spot to Ryan Hunter Ray. Already struggling with the front pretty bad. Copy. We are sh in turn four and five. James Hinchcliffe. He suffered injuries to his legs and pelvis area that requires surgery. The good news is Hinch is now recovering at a local hospital. 2016 was really talked about as the comeback year after the accident in 15. And we wanted to come back as a team and prove that nothing had changed. We were just as fast, just as competitive as we'd ever been. And we did most of the things we wanted to do. Checkered flag for James Hinchcliffe. Did he do it? Yes, he did. 230.50. James Hinchcliffe is on the pole. The only thing we didn't do was win a race. We came really close. We came eight one thousandths away, actually close. Can Hinchcliffe battle back? Can on still in the mix? Ray Hall and Hinchcliffe to the line. Graham oh. Ray Hall has won at Texas Motor Speedway. But we didn't do it. We didn't seal that deal. And. That sat with us pretty hard in the offseason. The track walk is our first opportunity to get here for this year, take an up close look at the track at a much slower speed, and take in some of the finer details of what may have changed from the last year. What's the matter, Mike? It's not super clear where the, no. where the track actually ends now. I don't remember the line being blue either. When you have a racetrack that is city streets for 360 days of the year, things can change. And when you're putting all these pieces back in place to make it a racetrack, maybe one wall is six inches further to the left, or maybe one curb is a different style than it was the year before. It's not like a permanent road course in that sense. These will all be about six inches further that way by the end of P1. I still can't believe in the history of this race we've never put somebody in the fountain. I don't know how that's possible. The amount of guys that have gone in there wheel to wheel and no one's ever ended up in the water. The number of times I've turned into this corner and thought that I misjudged it, I was taking the left front off on that wall. Ah, I made it. Yes. That gray stuff's going to be the problem. So if the off the pedals across it all, just kind of giving it one of these, waiting for one end of the other to hook up and like, okay, here we go. Long Beach is pretty unique because it's the only track that we go to where there's drift cars. And drift cars lay down a ton of rubber, a ton of marbles, and the first sessions are always a little bit sketchy because of it. This literally looks like the end of the race. Good. Oh, man, it's going to be so bad. Crazy. Would you like a Zamboni to come through and just wash it all off? Yeah, I'll do that. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you.
When you come to a Verizon IndyCar Series weekend, it is so difficult because you don't really have that much time in the grand scheme of things. A 45 minute session is over in the blink of an eye, so you barely have any time to make changes. You've got to roll off the truck with a car that's in the ballpark or you're never going to catch up. We hit the curb, sometimes get that kind of mid-corner snap. Okay, so um, let's do, let's just do one step step on front spring, see if we can help them into exit and then we'll help the traction. Yeah, in practice three, everything was going pretty well. We were sitting at the top of the time charts at the moment, and I was on a run and heard a really weird noise in the gearbox. Did you guys see that? Yeah, we saw something on telemetry, still trying to decipher it. What happened on your end? Went to shift, went to shift to six. Dash was reading six. And then uh, went into a neutral, I got a key on the dash. When we got the car back to the pit, it turned out that was the right call because something in the gearbox had come loose and had we kept running even just to finish that lap to come into the pits, there's a chance that we could have done even more damage. James Hinchcliffe in third, the left side mirror on that car has come loose. I wish I knew what happened to my left side mirror. My left side mirror disappeared. Bob, I'm going to really need your help in turn one and pin out. My left mirror is gone. Copy, yes. I look at my mirror. I'm staring at the side pot. Not a whole lot of help in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel situation. The mirror itself is still there, so it must yeah. have fallen out of the housing. After that, the mirror itself came right off. There was no glass in it. I was just staring at blank carbon. So at that point, especially being in the left side mirror and turn one being a left-hander, I was going to need all the help I could get from Bob spotting down in turn one to make sure I didn't get caught up in an accident there. Hunter Ray, he's now the leader, then Hinchcliffe, and then Alexander Rossi. Those front three have really set off and set sail. I was staring at the back of that DHL car for way longer than I wanted to, but that's kind of the nature of it. You know, Ryan started on sticker reds, which had a little bit more grip than our scrubbed reds. So in that first stint, even though we got around him on the start, he was able to pass me back before that first round of pit stops. Did Dixon switch to a three stop? Dixon switched to a three stop, yes. Yeah. Currently you and Hunter Ray and Rossi and Ray Hall are all on the same strategy. Everybody knew coming into this one, based on the length of the race and the fuel mileage that we're getting this year, that a two-stop race was going to be a little bit quicker. But a two-stop race is only really going to work if you're starting up front. We're thinking of doing a front one turn up front wing with the black tires. Is that OK? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Keeping a close eye on what's going on with James Hinchcliffe. He may stop this lap. That decision won't be made until they get the hairpin. Pit, pit, pit this lap. You're going okay to use an overtake to close the gap. Ryan Hunter Ray will stay out, but second and third are headed to pit lane. Three, two, one. Hinch going to the primary blacks. Clear. Okay to use overtake on the outlap. In that first round of stops, Ryan went one lap longer on fuel, which meant that when I came out of the pits on cold tires, he was still doing a lap on hot tires before he came in. That gave him enough of a gap that when he came out, he was far enough in front of me I couldn't get by him. As race car drivers, especially in IndyCar, we're so lucky, we're so fortunate. We get to do some really cool things. And one of the coolest things that we've ever got to do, I can honestly say, was, was doing this with the LAPD. Welcome. So on the behalf of the Los Angeles Police Department and Davis Training Facility, all of our instructors here, and particularly the driver's training unit, I'm glad you can make time. Getting to kind of take part in a pursuit, essentially, was so much fun. Just learning how they train guys, it's interesting because we've been through driver training in a very different environment, but you know, the same kind of philosophies apply, and it was interesting to kind of see how they teach it to people, you know, to officers that are coming into the program. What a privilege that was to watch. <laughs> no, seriously. How was that? All right? it, was, it was really brilliant. The fascinating part was watching when the understair came on, it, how 
finessed right. in response to understeer wedge. Thanks, Just sir. so you know, a 202.99. Passing for our police recruits is two minutes and 30. Wow. Crushed it. It's something I've wanted to do my entire career. Spin Ryan Hunter Ray intentionally. I'm not gonna lie, I could see myself doing something like this in the future. I'm used to chasing down guys as quickly as possible. I'd be up for it. I'm embarrassed for you. What was the lap time? Uh, 203.46, though. Speed him by a second. Side, outside, outside. These guys have been the front three for most of the day. Ryan hunter Ray, Alexander Rossi, who has jumped into second, and James Hinchcliffe is third. The only way we were going to get by him, because we were so close on speed on the racetrack, was to do the same thing. So in that second stint, when I was running back there, I saved as much fuel as I possibly could. Five laps until we stop. What do you think on front wing? Yeah, I'd give it a half turn. Copy. Can I give him one more lap? So far, the collector looks OK. Okay. Let me know. I'd yep. definitely like to get one more lap. You got one more. You will stay out. Stay out. We've got one more lap. Ryan Hunter Ray, the final stop. They're within their two stop window. Looking for a clean stop. Ryan was the one who made the call. Let's go to Blacks for this final stop. Not one adjustment to that car. 8.5 seconds. Ryan Hunter Ray's down and away. Put in a good one. Okay, to use overtake. James Hinchcliffe spent a lot of time in the offseason out here in Los Angeles as a member of the Dancing with the Stars cast. Came in second there, trying to get a W here this weekend at Long Beach. It's a nice stop. Sticker reds for James Hinchcliffe. 8.8 .8 seconds for the Canadian. The guys were killer in the pit stop, and we came out in front of both Ryan and Alex. Dixon ahead, pitted out of the lead. You're currently P1. When you're sitting up front, the race has fallen into a rhythm, the last stops are done, and you've got a gap to the guy in second. The last thing you want to see is a yellow. So what do we get? Full course, yellow. There's the Something yellow. wrong with Alexander Rossi in the 98. He's slow on the track. We're going to see just a terrific restart here. A lot of action. The caution for Rossi's issue was a very long one. It's still sweeping the track time, so at least a couple more laps. Yeah, after this amount of time, we'll probably need a solid two to get heat in the brakes, so the sooner we know, the better. Yeah, copy. I was just looking at telemetry, they are really cold. When you're running around behind the pace car like that, it's tough to keep heat in the tires. These Firestones want to be pushed hard, same with the brakes. So at the same time as we're saving fuel, so we can't really spend the time and, and fuel to put heat in the tires, all of a sudden it's one or two laps to go before the green comes out. You start working so hard to clean your tires up, make sure the heat's in them, and make sure the heat's in the brakes. Because heading down into turn one on a restart with cold tires and cold brakes, it's not a whole lot of fun. Green, green, green. Green flag back in the air. Wow, Hitchcliffe smoked them off the final corner. Look at how strung out they are. Boy, uh, Hitchcliffe just did a brilliant job to make sure that he didn't get jumped on that start. He timed it perfectly to carry momentum through the hairpin, and look at the advantage he has. Not under threat, one bit. That whole last stint was uh, was pretty nerve-wracking, to be honest. Hunter Ray has 68 seconds of overtake remaining. Second car behind now is Forday on red. 39 seconds overtake behind him. Newgarden, 40 seconds overtake on red. Even though I'm running around out front in that last stint at the start of it, I knew that all the guys behind me had a bunch of push to pass. The gap closed between Hinchcliffe and Ryan Hunter Ray. 1.1 seconds now, so they are uh, stabilized ahead of Bourdais by six seconds now. He's pushing it to the limit. Oh no! By just one second, oh. and Ryan Hunter Ray is stopped on the track. What you got, Ryan? It just died. Ryan Hunter Ray was chasing down. James Hinchcliffe, and now Ryan Hunter Ray has stopped on the course. It'll be a three lap shootout. James Hinchcliffe, his last win was New Orleans back in 2015. Got enough overtake to use it on the front straight uh, after the restart. So be smart about it. You've had good restarts all day. Just keep up the good work. Green flag back in the air. Go, Mayor. 
Hitch is the master of the restart. It's not even close. Single file all the way back. Somebody's going to have to do something bold here and soon. The guy who's in the driver's seat right now is Hitchcliffe. He's got more push to pass than the guys behind him. He can't drive fast enough right now. Come on, boy. White flag. Plus one to four day. He is on overtake. Push hard. Eight back. James Hinchcliffe now works his way around that fountain area. He has been flawless since taking over the lead. We can almost cruise at home now. He's just got to get through this last corner here. Last Seaside couple corners. way for the final time for James Hinchcliffe. He makes the right-hand turn at nine. Now the sweeping turn 10. Coming through the hairpin for the final time. Twin checkers out the 43rd Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. Goes to the mayor of Hinchtown. James, great job. Awesome, awesome drive. Stand high at the Long Beach Grand Prix! Yes! Woo! What a brilliant drive in all facets. The restarts, the pace, the use of push to pass. The team told me this morning we have a great car. Near death in a practice crash at Indy. And now he will head back to Victory Circle. There's three races in my life that I want to win. One of them is the Indy 500, one of them is the race in Toronto, because it's my hometown, and one of them is Long Beach. Didn't suck to scratch one of those off the list today. Everyone in the team has pushed so hard since the checkered flag fell in Sonoma to make sure we came into the season better prepared than we ever have. Mechanics did an incredible job. The engineers have worked harder than ever, and I've put way more into myself than I ever have in the past. And it's all coming together. To get that win finally, after two years, after going winless in 16, was a huge relief for everybody. It's uh, one of those days that I think we'll all remember for a really long time. Good job, bud. <laughs> we don't need no left We redeemed ourselves. Yeah. I don't know if winning Long Beach makes me more Hollywood, but let's put it this way. Maybe now Hinchtown's like a, like a suburb of Hollywood.